Let's talk about the skill collecting a urine specimen from an indwelling catheter. So just know this slide I know looks really overwhelming, but just be really familiar with your facility protocols. Now, due to the really high CAUTI rates we've talked about, specific units may utilize a particular protocol or criteria on how we're going to collect that urinary specimen from an indwelling catheter. So oftentimes, it's going to be driven by protocols that look like this. So now let's take a look at our equipment on how we're going to get that urinary specimen. We need an alcohol swab to clean that port. We need a syringe to pull back our collection and a sterile specimen container. Now, really important, make sure you get a biohazard bag to put this in. Once you collect a specimen, there could get some things on the outside of that. You want to make sure this is sealed and contained and labeled appropriately. Also next, make sure the patient has a client identification label on the specimen. If we don't label it, we don't know if it's his, hers, 952 room, 962's room, we're not sure. And that's really important in regards to patient results and treatment. So make sure you put a patient label on your specimen. Hey guys, welcome to the skill urine specimen collection from an indwelling catheter. So just know, due to CAUTI rates or catheter-associated UTIs, specific units may use criteria to gather a urine specimen from a catheter that's already indwelling. So this is going to matter with certain patient populations and cases. Just be aware there's specific facility pro protocols that you need to follow. So let's now take a look at what we're going to need. We're going to need an alcohol swab to clean that port. We're going to need a syringe so we can pull back the urine and also the designated specimen container that your facility uses. Also, it's a great idea to grab a laboratory biohazard bag. You want to make sure you put and secure this specimen in here. And of course, it's really important to label your specimen. That's a big deal. It's really important to get the right results with the right patient. So before we get started, don't forget about your hand hygiene and of course, provide privacy to your patient. Now, this is something we want to explain the procedure to the patient and why we're collecting it is a great idea. Now, of course, once we get started, you can use your bedside table and make sure you're going to place this on a clean surface. And upon collection, you want to raise the bed for an appropriate working height so you have good body mechanics. Now, since we've touched that bed, perform hand hygiene again and don your gloves. Now's a good time to go ahead and open up that specimen container and place the lid on the table. Now just note everything inside of that specimen container is sterile, so be conscious not to touch inside here. So now let's talk about what we need to do to get started. We want to perform our hand hygiene and provide privacy to our patient. It's always important to make sure you explain the procedure to the patient and get your equipment ready. And as you can see here, I've already got it on a clean surface. So make sure as well, before you start, I want to raise my patient's bed to an appropriate working height. And now that I've touched the bed, I want to perform my hand hygiene again and put on gloves. So now that I've done that, I also have my sterile specimen container here. We want to make sure that I go ahead and open this up. Just know that anything inside this container is sterile, so you don't want to touch the inside surface. So now I've got this open and I'm going to put this here. Now, if there's some extra urine in the drainage tubing, for example, we want to drain any of this standing urine from the drainage tube down into the collection bag. Now, once we've done this, we can take those alcohol pads and disinfect that port using an alcohol swab again and to allow it to fully dry. 
Now we can connect our 10 mil syringe to the port and then we can pull back on the plunger and when we see fresh urine here, we can aspirate the urine using that syringe. Now remove the syringe from the sampling port and you're gonna slowly transfer the urine in the syringe into the specimen container. Now, once we've completed this, you can dispose of the syringe and secure the top of the specimen container while maintaining sterility. Okay, so once I've done this, once I get started, there may be some extra urine in the tubing itself. I want to make sure I drain any standing urine from the tube into the collection bag. And really, you're just going to use gravity. So I would have this and drop this below, so that way I can empty this tubing. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to take my alcohol swab and disinfect the sampling port here. So the sampling port, just as a reminder, this is our balloon port. This is not what we're using in this case. We are using the sampling port here and I'm gonna clean it with my alcohol swab and make sure it fully dries. Now, once I've cleaned this and allowed this to fully dry, I'm gonna connect my syringe to the sampling port. So of course, as you see, that was a sterile syringe that I'm attaching. So I'm going to take my sample port. This is going to push just nicely in here. This is called a needleless sampling port. Sometimes you may have to have a needle to access this. Just know this may vary depending on your equipment. But right now I've connected my syringe and I'm also going to make sure once fresh urine appears, I'm going to aspirate and pull back on the plunger. So it's important to note if it's attached to the bed sheet, go ahead and take this off. And I want to make sure I clamp thoroughly here. So I'm going to clamp and then I'm going to aspirate urine here for my specimen. Now, once I've done this, I can remove the syringe from the sampling port. And then I'm going to transfer this into the specimen container. And you may need a certain amount, so you would just repeat the process. So once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and dispose of this syringe. Then I'm going to take my container and make sure I secure the lid. So upon completing the procedure, we can label the specimen container at the client's bedside. This is a great idea to do it at the bedside, that way we can double check those patient identifiers. We want to then ensure that the specimen container gets into the laboratory biohazard bag. Now we can discard our used supplies, put the patient back in the lowest position for safety. Remove our gloves, perform your hand hygiene, and of course, don't forget to document your procedure. Now, when we're talking about specimens, make sure you have the urine specimen and it's transferred to the lab immediately or stored at the facility protocol. Then I'm going to take my label and every facility is a little bit different on what the label looks like, but you notice on this image here, there's some commonalities. You definitely need the date especially the patient's name and all of the different components that's on your label. So make sure that you label the specimen container at the bedside and it may look a little something like this. Then once I've done that, here's a big kicker. Don't forget to place it into a biohazard bag and it may look like something like this. As you can imagine with transport, there may be urine on the outside of the sample, something like that. We want to make sure that this stays secure. So I'm going to put this in my biohazard bag. We want to discard all of our used supplies. Make sure as well before you leave the patient that you're going to make sure that patient's bed is in the lowest position. Now, once we've done that, I can remove my gloves, perform my hand hygiene and document the procedure. Now, it's important to, it, to ensure that that urine sample is transferred to the lab immediately and stored according to the facility protocols.